Okay, Carl, should I still even make this video? This phone's been out for like two weeks at this point. Yes, it is time. People need this video. People want this video. We must make it happen now. Okay, let's do it. Hi everyone, Knoopsy here, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about the new iPhone 10. Some of the major key aspects, things that you wanna know, and if it's worth it. Let's get started. Let's get the notch out of the way first. Now for me, after two weeks of using this phone, I barely even noticed that it's even there. Of course, it's still there, and if you hate how it looks, you're probably not gonna get over it. And for pretty much everything daily usage-wise besides video watching, if you zoom in, you don't really notice that it's even there. It just sort of blends in and fades away. Apple could definitely have hid the notch through software, but if you actually read some of the traits for applications, Apple wants it to be prominently shown. So personally, I'm fine with the notch, but I wish Apple at least used the two ears and the sides of the notch for more stuff. If they were customizable to show do not disturb, battery percentage, or even used for the volume level indicator like this awesome Reddit concept. Besides just the physical appearance, the notch also houses a whole bunch of technology for facial scanning and, and emojis. The king of now, Face ID is way better than I personally expected and works about 95% of the time. When it doesn't work is only when it's too close to my face or just when I'm on a really off angle. And pretty much every other time, it does work. It's not going to be as fast as Touch ID in the iPhone 8 Plus or other Android phones with fingerprint scanners, maybe just a few milliseconds slower, but it has its benefits too, like working if you're wearing some light gloves, or if your hands are wet, it still works. But you still do have to swipe up at the very end, so it's an extra step that is kind of annoying at times. But can oopsie, the OnePlus 5T does it in 0.4 seconds. Okay, so the OnePlus 5T was announced with this whole new facial recognition thing that takes like 1.4 seconds or something. It's crazy fast. But the thing is, it's basically the same as previous Android phones where they have smart lock and trusted faces, I think it's called. It's exact same thing. So it's less secure, less advanced, but still, it does the job for most people. The iPhone X is definitely a much more secure option, like it's way more secure, but for most users, do they really need such an overkill security feature? Probably not, but what you can do on the iPhone X is use it for payments with Apple Pay or online, download applications, and log into apps and websites, so it's pretty cool. The rest of this phone's design, of course, is absolutely beautiful. I like the new space grey color, and the look of the glossy stainless steel is awesome. I personally prefer the overall feel of aluminum iPhones in the hand for some reason, but the stainless steel here definitely feels quite nice. And the overall size of this phone is incredibly pocketable, although I wish Apple actually made a bigger version of this phone, like a 6.5 inch version with the screen, that'd be great. Now for the first OLED screen on an iPhone, it looks pretty awesome. There's great colors, great accuracy, some fairly good contrast, and some awesome sharpness. There is a slight blue tint that is kind of common with OLED panels, but it's nowhere near as bad as the Pixel 2 XL. That was far worse. Here, it's only kind of noticeable if you tilt it a lot, and that's it. But still, Apple doesn't actually fully use the size of this 5.8 inch display. There's no split screen multitasking, there's no picture in picture video, there's nothing like that. Apple doesn't even use that huge gap at the bottom of the keyboard for anything, like for emojis, nothing. And all of those unsupported applications are still such a pain. Most applications may get supported eventually, and many are actually already supported, but for those that aren't, it's not great. And since there's no home button in sight, we have those slick new gestures. Swiping to close apps is amazing, it's way better than having a home button, but I don't like multitasking in the control center, and notification slide down gestures. Reachability definitely helps, but I wish the control center was a bit easier to access. Now, it's kind of like Android having control center notifications at the very top, but they're separated so it's just two different things you gotta remember and swipe down on. And still, it is iOS 11 so there are plenty of different issues and bugs here and there throughout the software, and plus many applications really aren't made well for the iPhone X. As it is all software, it can be fixed in the future, but for now, there are some small annoyances, for sure. Now, moving on to battery life, on Twitter, I was complaining quite a lot about my terrible usage time for the first few days. When I first got the phone, I was getting around 20% or 30% by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, which is pretty bad. 
but somehow I guess I fixed it, because now by around 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, I end with around 30% or 40% battery. I have no idea how I possibly fixed it, but I've totally avoided animated wallpapers and have kept off those attention aware features for Face ID, and I guess that did the trick. Also, for a trick to get a bit better battery life in a really cool OLED night friendly mode, go to settings, accessibility, and there's also this shortcut option and choose the smart invert colors option and it basically turns all the white colors in your phone to black and also keeps a lot of the elements like pictures the same color. For applications optimized for this feature, of course. The final thing about this phone that I want to talk about are the set of cameras on this device. So the front 7 megapixel selfie camera takes acceptably good selfies. Now with portrait mode though, doesn't even compare to the Pixel 2 XL. The rear cameras are up there with the best of the best for smartphone cameras. All these shots have HDR on and I haven't really turned it off because it's just as fast with it on or without it on and it adds a lot of great detail pictures are absolutely beautiful and I have really no complaints here with how shots turn out. Things look natural with a bit more boosted colors than previous iPhones, but still things look great. And that slightly upgraded telephoto lens also takes some great results as well. When the lights go out, photos on the iPhone X, at least with the main camera, are still pretty excellent. There's light noise and grain, and there's still a lot of detail and great colors. Portrait mode is still awesome, it looks very natural, very DSLR-like, and it's sort of my go-to method for shooting when I don't have my DSLR. The 4K video with the dual stabilized cameras is probably some of the best video on really any phone out there. It looks great, looks very natural, but I wish it handled highlights a bit better because they kind of get blown out in most situations. Okay, so this phone is straight up $1,000 US unlocked or off contract. Now if you get it on the upgrade plan or other plans as well, it may be a bit cheaper, but in general this is a very expensive phone. Okay, so personally, I like this phone, the issues being the price for some people and some of the softer things, of course. But besides that, it's seriously a great overall device and Apple's first step towards the future of smartphones. It's pretty great. Still though, I don't really think for the vast majority of people, it's really worth that price. But if you're a hardcore Apple fan who wants the best Apple phone available, this is a pretty good choice, if not the best choice. You should also just buy this if you want to try something new in general. The experience, daily usage, is kind of different overall. Also buy this if you simply just want it. Like it's a very cool phone and you're probably going to really enjoy it if you want to pay that much. Now for my beautiful avocado rating system, I give this phone 8.5 out of 10 avocados. It's a pretty solid overall device. Like this video if you liked it and thank you for watching.